are in Coca at the moment, and we want to get from Coca to uh, Nuevo Rocafuerte, and then from there, where you cross the border to Peru, to Iquitos, which takes about five days, más o menos. But um, if you go the public route, you have to take a boat to the border, and then end up on a cargo ship that you don't even know will be there or not. So, I mean, you could be waiting there for 10 days, 15 days, until the cargo ship decides to leave. So we didn't want to do that. We didn't want to be stuck in a town and not have food and not have a place to stay. So we hired some guy that we met on the street to take us via boat, the three of us and one other person. So we are on the Rio Napo and we're going to board a little passenger boat now and take it to the frontera of Peru. There we'll get our passport stamped and then uh, we'll be on to Iquitos. It's going to be a five day journey and uh, yeah, Marco. <laughs> this is Marco, our guide. Buenos días. Justamente soy el guía de aquí hasta la frontera con Perú, con Ecuador, Perú, Pantoja, Perú. Primer pueblo fronterizo peruano. Hoy día llegaremos hasta Nuevo Rocafuerte, el último pueblo fronterizo ecuatoriano. Los cuales de ahí tomaremos un bote el día de mañana. ¿Ok? What he said. So we're off. A guy, Marco, seems to have things together. It's breakfast time. Okay, Holly, what is this? What are you about to eat here? It's a palm tree grub. So I've been suckered to eating this today. Lots of proteins. Mm-hmm. How is it? It's not bad. So this is Ango Terrace. And uh, we stayed here last night. Um, so this was our second stop along the river. So we're done with day two, we're on to day three. And in many of these places, they have a strict regimen of electricity conservation. So, from 6 p.m. until 9 p.m., they get to use electricity. And after that, boom! So everybody knows to do their business then, and afterwards, it's bedtime. It's about four hours in, five hours in, and uh, yeah. We all had to pee, so this is it. Cause you can't pee in the water because there's the karinu, which is the little fish that likes to slither up your uh, urethra. And nobody likes that, so... <laughs> nobody likes
just had a rain shower pass. We had to cover everything up. See, always, always have a poncho. Always, just, just some dinky old poncho that you'd wear under Niagara Falls or something. Because you can actually cover all of your backpack and everything underneath it. We're approaching Santa Clotilde. It is close to 10 p.m. on Friday night. We've been on this boat for 13 hours. almost 13 hours now. And our destination lies ahead. Those lights in the distance is where we're supposed to be going. But it's really hard to tell, you know, when you're surrounded by darkness. So I'm assuming that's the place where we're meant to be since we've been on this boat for ages now. What's going on here? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out this code. It's like, which way does it go? Because I can't see anything. It's 6 a.m. in Santa Clotilde. Uh, we just woke up and came straight down to the dock. We're gonna catch our boat to Mansa, and from Mansa, we're gonna take a motor taxi all the way to Iquitos. This is the last leg of our trip. Santa Clotilde is a wonderful little town. It's very well maintained. It's got great infrastructure, like paved pathways all over the place. There's still no cars, there's no tourists. It's very local, very river like. It's cool. Okay, this is Massa. This is the last port before we get to Iquitos. So we take a motorbike from here and take it to the bigger city. This is when we have to start worrying about our belongings again. There's too many greedy eyes on me right now. I don't really like it, but I think it's necessary to uh, have the camera out. But we're almost there, so our four to five day journey is just about complete. <laughs> 